Okay, first of all we'll do Hunter's Mark. And in accordance with Blizzard's uh, glyphs and what I've just explained about Camera Shot, we'll do Serpent Stain, Camera Shot, Arcane Shot, Aim Shot, do some fill ins with Steady Shot, Steady Shot, back to Arcane Shot, Camera Shot because that's come up, again fill in with a Steady Shot, Aim Shot, Arcane Shot, fill in again with a Steady Shot, maybe another one. I will just keep going around depending on what is ready. Now you can see in the bottom hand corner of my screen that I've got an add-on called or Omni CC and that's what's giving my timers on each of my icons so I know what's coming up, what's coming round and how to time my steady shots. Now sometimes, say I do a steady shot, so again I can then quickly stop casting using either a stop casting macro or uh, you could jump whichever just to make sure that you get your extra shots in so you don't have to wait for steady shots to come around and that's why haste is important um, what haste does is your global cooldown is 1.5 seconds if you can make steady shot 1.5 seconds it means that it will never interfere with a global cooldown can still obviously work if your camera shot is almost done and your steady shot is still casting shouldn't interfere too much in waiting for that to come back round so you can hit either commercial shot, arcane shot or aim. Okay, so we'll just go back to 100% mana and you can still see Army CC going round. I'm not really watching shot rotation all that much at the moment, but you can see that I will do arcane and aim whenever that comes round. Chimera shot when that ever comes round. And obviously, 9 seconds with the Chimera shot glyph you'll be doing a lot more camera shots and um, camera shot is a big amount of your damage and I'll show you some uh, damage meters in a minute okay let's just stop that for the time being I call my pet back it's going to be mad okay now if we look at the damage meters and I'll just bring that back up damage Okay, you can see auto shot there, steady shot underneath, piercing shots is a marksmanship talent and chimera shot. Now you'll see two chimera shots there, you'll see one that's done 41,000 damage and the serpent sting value of chimera shot which is done an extra 23. You can see it hit nine times and it crit three times, obviously I've not done, that was only what, two, three minutes worth of shooting, so that's why it's, it's still quite low. Usually in a boss fight, chimera shot would be just under steady shot and I'll link a my web stats report for you to see roughly what I generally do in um, 10 man normal trial of the champion okay let's just get rid of that okay now your abilities as marksmanship and I'll do it as well as pets uh, you'll notice that I don't have call of the wild on auto cast for my pet and you'll also notice that I've got two readinesses there and that's just a macro problem. I'll show you here that I've got a macro which does cast sequence of rapid fire, readiness and rapid fire. So basically what it does now I've got two here and what will happen is generally if it was working because it's not working right the second and I would have rapid fire and readiness next to each other. Let me just, hit it. just like that rapid fire and readiness. What I would generally do, I would wait for a boss fight to use Call of the Wild, but I would use Readiness all the time, but wouldn't use Readiness all the time, I would only use Readiness on a boss fight. Because basically trash mobs go down so fast these days, there's no point using these two abilities until you've say hit a, a really large mob or a boss. So I generally keep these um, for boss fights. And what I do and end up doing at the start of the fight, obviously misdirect the tank, Hunter's Mark, Send Pet, your shot rotation, which would be Serpent Stink, Hammer Shot, Arc Aimed, and then Steady Shot for until shots come back round off cooldown. I would also do the start just before doing a Serpent Sting, Call of the Wild. Call of the Wild increases your attack power. Now, Serpent Sting works on a spell power basis, so the more attack power you have, the more spell power you have. So it's better to do Call of the Wild first because your Serpent Sting will do more damage the more attack power you have. It can fiddly, but you, I hope you understand what I mean. So do Call of the Wild first on, the, on a boss fight, 
then serpent sting, camera shot in and three shot rotations, hitting uh, rapid fire in between those shots. So as soon as you've done serpent sting, camera shot, arc and aimed, do rapid fire, as, and you've got a call of the wild going at the same time. Once rapid fire is almost about to end, hit readiness. Make sure all your three shots have already been hit before you hit readiness. So make sure the Kamara shot, Arcane shot and Aim shot are all on cooldown before hitting readiness. And the trick to this is, if you have all those three on cooldown and you hit readiness, you have those three shots back again. Okay, let's talk a little bit about pets now. Now, you've noticed that I've got a raptor. My favourite pet, and I don't care what anyone says, unless you're in a hardcore guild that demands you do the top damage, the top, top damage that you must do for that hardcore raid, go for whatever pet you like. If you like wolves, go for wolves. If you like raptors, go for raptors. If you prefer cats, go for cats. It's not that much of an issue. If you're not in a massive hardcore raiding guild that demands you must do everything you can 24 hours a day, just go for whatever pet you fancy. Now, I have got a wolf as well, which is only about level 78, and obviously I am playing about with the Furious Howl buff. But it doesn't seem to be that much of a massive increase. Pets are there for companions. If you like a raptor, go for a raptor. Now, I like the raptor one because it has a nice dot, it does nice, sufficient amounts of damage, and basically I don't have to watch for it. I don't have any buffs I have to think about, I don't have any... Um, ticks I have to think about. Basically it does its own thing and all I do is watch for Call of the Wild and use that on boss fights when I want it to happen. I have Rabbit on auto cast and that happens as and when that happens. Charge and Dash on auto as well as its focus dump which is Claw and Savage Rend which it's his uh, main his special ability. You can see his Savage Rend, Rabbit all on auto. Charge, Claw on auto. And I can bring up my build if you like, so you can see my build. There you go, there's my build for my Raptor. I have found this to be one of the better damage builds. It all depends on what you want. Um, to be honest, you should go for com Cobra Reflexes, Spiked Collar, Spider's Bite as your main damage abilities. And it's up to you whether you want Bloodthirsty and Heart of the Phoenix. To be honest, I've found in most raids, Heart of the Phoenix isn't that great. Um, if your pet dies, just res it or leave it. It's up to you. As long as you've done Call of the Wild and your pet has died after you've hit Call of the Wild, wait until the end of the fight to bring your pet back. Okay, it's a loss of a bit of damage, but as long as Call of the Wild has already been done and you know that the boss is not is going to die before those five minutes is up, I wouldn't worry too much about your pet dying. Plus, I've noticed Heart of the Phoenix bugs a lot. And it means that when you bring your pet back, all your pet abilities are greyed out and you, you can't use your pet abilities anyway, so it's useless. Um, go for avoidance, just mainly for AoEs, and that brings into Call of it brings into Rabbit. So you've got Rabbit and Call of the Wild there. Also gives you access to one of these two. And it's up to you which one of these you choose. Um, to be honest, I go for shark attack, mainly because I don't really care about my pet all that much. I keep it alive as best I can, but I rely on healers to keep it alive as well. But if it dies, it's only a small amount of damage lost. Whereas Wild Hunt, I suppose, uh, better for wolves, I guess, because the, the extra attack power your pet gets translates to, to Furious Howl. But I haven't tested that in any way. I do know a friend of mine has a spore bat and loves his spore bat. So, you know... Pets are entirely up to you, as long as you're not having to do the maximum amount of damage. This game is a laugh, you're supposed to do it because you like it, and because it's fun. Not because you need to do 100% of damage 100% of the time. So, you know, go for whichever pet you fancy. Uh, there is a nice website called wow-petopia.com, and that shows you all the pets. 